Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Energy Minister Ben Martins had his first formal engagements with the media this week, while his department also began consultations on South Africa's future energy plan. Terence Creamer was at both events and joins me to discuss the highlights. Hi Terence. What were some of the key points of emphasis raised by Martins in his engagement with the media? Well, the Minister, since the Cabinet reshuffle, has been fairly low profile. So this was his really his first formal engagement with the media. And there was a promise of uh, more to come. I suppose as the term of all our Ministers are now coming to an end with the elections coming up next year, I think there's, uh, there's an attempt by some of them, and I think Martins is among them, to show that the work that has been done over the last five years. And he had his full team there, di Director General, as well as a number of deputy directors general, and he had a lot of the CEOs and chair people uh, that fall under the uh, the Department of Energy from the different state-owned enterprises, and I think gave an account of what they've been trying to do over the last few years, whether it's on the energy planning side, whether it's on preparing, uh, making preparing the ground for things like controversial things like uh, nuclear and fracking. In fact, he made the point that people still refer to him as the ETOLS minister, but I think he, if, he, if he sustains his role in cabinet and in the energy portfolio, I think the big issues of fracking and energy are going to be just as contentious. So I think it was a, an issue of exposing South Africa to the work that his department has been doing and to show that uh, they are ready to, you know, to stand by those achievements and to sort of, you know, raise them in public, as well as to show a, a, an awareness and a willingness to engage. In fact, he said that there's going to be a, a lot more consultation, especially around some of the contentious programs that are to come in energy at the moment. We're seeing that a lot of the focus is on the, the big planning, the integrated energy plan, and the sub-plans within that around the integrated resource plan for electricity and the different components uh, that fall under that, whether that's nuclear or coal, um, or renewables and electricity space, or the role of um, uh, liquid fuels and gas in the economy in future. It also emerged that the so-called Coal 3 project could be built by the private sector rather than ESCOM. Yes, I think there's been quite a lot of confusion since the post-cabinet Lechotla press briefing where Do uh, Minister Rob Davies made the announcement that Coal 3 was a go and that we are now starting to prepare the way for this third coal project. Now, Coal 3 is code name that Eskom uses for its next large-scale power station. So everyone assumes, uh, or assumed that this would be an Eskom power station. In fact, the CEO of Eskom immediately welcomed the decision, saying that's exactly what they've been calling for. They needed certainty, and then they needed to move ahead with the planning because planning and the lack of it. It was uh, in the diagnosis of the problems that have afflicted Madupi and Kusile is that there was a lack of time and uh, decisions weren't made early enough. So there was a, a big a sigh of relief in some ways from Eskom, although they did flag that they didn't know where this project would necessarily be built with, what the contracting model would be, what the technology could be that would be deployed into this power station, and most crucially how they'd finance it because uh, Eskom's got a major funding shortfall we know that the third multi-year price determination has left them with about five, 250 um, or 220 to 250 billion rand short of what they need over the five-year period. So funding is going to be a major issue. But to, uh, th there, had been, there has been confusion because there's been a determination that was issued by the previous energy minister in December around private uh, base load coal as well as imported uh, hydro as well as gas as well as co-generation and it, it wasn't quite clear how Coal 3 fitted into that. Uh, and today or this week it's emerged that um, actually Coal 3 is not necessarily the Coal 3 that we, uh, that as Eskom understands it, but it could be one of these private uh, uh, coal-fired power stations as part of a, a rollout of coal over the next few years, more efficient coal. So coal will be part of the mix. I think that was also a point emphasized by uh, Minister Martins that we're going to have a mix of energy sources. Yes, renewables is going to be a feature. Nuclear is going to be a feature, but coal remains a mainstay. And I think that there was some attempt to clarify that this uh, the determination around coal three has yet to be made, and that determination needs to be made by uh, Minister Martins. 
and, uh, and he still has to apply his mind, and that's what he's going to be doing over the next few months. This all took place against the backdrop of ongoing public consultations on South Africa's integrated energy plan. Yes, you know, South Africa, in terms of its Energy Act, uh, there's a requirement of an integrated energy plan, which doesn't just cover electricity, which we focus on a lot, but also liquid fuels and gas. And uh, we just haven't had one of these integrated energy plans, uh, even though it's a legislative requirement. So the processes, there's been stop and start processes, and there have been uh, times when we had uh, integrated energy plans um, published, but they weren't very comprehensive. So we also had a, a, a situation of crisis in the electricity space, which led to a lot of focus around the electricity plan, which is the integrated resource plan. So I think that it's really been, uh, it was put on the back burner as a result of that. We now have entered a public consultation phase around this bigger integrated energy plan with the sub plans like the integrated resource plan and others talking to the, to the IEP and the IEP in turn guiding what will be in those plans. So uh, the public consultation kicked off in Johannesburg this week. It's going to move to Cape Town and Durban. And there's also a, a promise that it will go to some of the, the, the more the regional or provincial centres. But the, the schedule and the outline of how that will take place hasn't been published yet. So we're in the process of engagement. Now, the, the key thing here around a plan that really takes us to 2050, uh, which is a long time away, are some of the assumptions used. And I think that's going to be a lot of the focus of the stakeholder engagement. Governments outline some of its base, baseline assumptions, whether those relate to growth in energy demand, economic growth, the discount rate used on projects. Um, and uh, there's also, within that, they've got a base case, which looks at what the current RP looks like, as well as our current installed base, and what that will mean in terms of the future costs around electricity, uh, as, <coughs> as well as you know if we're going to meet our commitments to the environment around um, uh, the climate change commitments around lowering our emissions. And basically the base case shows that while it's the most, uh, the cheapest solution, it's not going to meet the, the climate change commitments and other environmental commitments around water. So there's a number of other test cases that are outlined in the current draft integrated energy report. And uh, those test cases look at emission limits, they look at the carbon tax and they look at maybe upscaling renewables or upscaling gas as different test cases and then they, they are costed as well as uh, looked at in terms of the other policy imperatives also around things like localization and the need to create jobs around the energy program as well as the environmental commitments that we've made so this is going to be a process that takes place over the next month or so of engagement till the end of october then the doe will go back and redraft uh, a report which will be called the Draft Integrated Energy Plan. That will then be put out for further public comment. So I think that probably by the end of the current term of this administration, we'll have the draft definitely in place and there might be some public engagement. Whether we'll have the final Integrated Energy Plan or not, I'm not sure, um, because they've shown that it's the timeline is around 12 months for this consultation and redrafting process. But by the end of it, we will, for the first time, uh, have an Integrated Energy plan which will give us sort of a, a visibility of the pathways that we're going to be choosing as a country to meeting security of supply for electricity as well as liquid fuels as well as gas. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.